Hi! In this video, I'm going to talk about nesting elements inside of Resolve. We'll start off with compound clips and what you might want to use them, and we'll follow that up with nesting timelines. So let's get started with compound clips. What is a nested element? Are you blind? She's a nester. What's that supposed to mean? It means she throws you some tail, a couple of pieces of bacon, and bippity boppity boo, you've got a roommate. Nesting is the act of combining multiple assets into a single combined asset. So for example, we have this clip here that I've selected in my timeline. It shows this business meeting. I'll let it play for a moment. It's a group of people at a conference table that appear to be rather enthralled with a bar graph. So I'm going to add a title to this. I'll open the effects pane. I'll grab the text title here, and since the clip is currently selected, if I take the text element and drag it on top of the timeline viewer and then select place on top, it will automatically size the title to match the selected clip like this. Now, if I didn't drag it on top of the viewer, it would not size it. It would set it to the default length. So that's just a handy little trick for you there. Now we'll go back to the middle of this clip and I'll customize the title right here. I'll turn off the effects pane I'll turn on our inspector here and we'll give this an actual title. Now we have a title. I'm going to put a stroke on it so it'll stand out a little bit. That should do it. I'll go over to settings and position it. Now I have my two clips together. If I was to keep adding titles and stacking them on top of each other, this could become unwieldy pretty quickly. But we have a method of overcoming that, and that is a compound clip. I'll select both of these clips. I'm using a lasso to do that, or I can just click and shift click to select multiple elements. But we'll use the lasso here just for grins. I'll right mouse click and select new compound clip at the top of the context menu. Now we have two options. One is start time code. This is a way that I could tell it to not use the entire selected clip to create the compound clip, but to rather start in at an offset from the beginning so that I get a subsection of the clip. The other element is a name. For the name, I typically preface them with a square bracket, capital C, square bracket, and then the name of it. Now, when I create this, we're going to end up with a new element in our media pool with that name. I'm going to close my inspector here. I don't need it right now. We can see that we now have what looks to be a single clip, but we can see it has a different icon down here, and it has the name that we gave it with the square bracket C. With the square bracket C, I can immediately look at it and know that it's a compound clip. Coming up here, we can see that it added this asset to our media pool for us. And that way, if I was to delete this, I could now just grab it from the media pool up here and I'd have my compound clip with the plotting the overthrow still intact right there, just like we had it before. Now, what if I wanted to customize this even further after creating the compound clip? I can right mouse click on it, and I have two options up here in the context menu. Open in timeline and decompose in place. We'll use the open in timeline option first. It's going to open up in a temporary timeline. Now I can go in here and make changes. For example, I could go into the inspector and add an exclamation point. Now that I've made my change, all I have to do is to switch back to the original timeline by selecting it from up top here. Now we're back where we were, but our update has been applied and you can see it here. The other method we can use is to decompose in place. That will put all of these assets back into place in the current timeline. Then we can create a new compound clip. If I was to select these and create a new compound clip, it's going to add it to the media pool as another compound clip, even though I still have the old one in the media pool. I'm not going to do that for this demo, but I could take this one and just drop it in here like so. I'll turn off this title here so you can see there is a difference, and plotting the overthrow of that original compound clip is still there. So we'll get rid of these, we don't need them, and move this back into place. So that's one reason we might want to go ahead and make a compound clip. We can combine all these assets to make the timeline a little cleaner, a little neater, and a little easier to deal with. Now let's take a different situation here. I'm going to take these clips over here, which are nine HD clips that are all playing back at once. I'm going to delete the gap between these two assets here by selecting it and hitting delete. Now I want to swap these two so that the end of this clip will occur after the stack of video collage clips. 
We hit shift command period a few times and that moves the assets over for us. Now at the end of this clip right here, let's say that I want to transition into this plotting the overthrow clip. Well, we could try and add a transition to the end of each of these clips here. Let's see what that does just for grins. I'll close the media pool for now. We'll go over to effects. We go to video transitions and down at the very bottom I have the burnaway transition right here and I'll take that and I'll add it to the end of each of these clips. I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch me doing it. All right, I've added the transition to every clip and now let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's not exactly what I want. Additionally, this is pretty messy and it was a lot of work adding all of those to the individual clips like that. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to make a compound clip out of all of these video clips here. Then we'll just apply the transition between the two compound clips. I'll undo all of these transitions that were added in. Now we're back to what we had before, which is just a straight cut. I'll select all of these using the lasso. Now I'm going to create another compound clip and we'll call this video array. Now our array is just a single compound clip. Now I'll come in here and add our burn away transition to the two clips. Much easier than going through and adding it to each individual clip and the result looks like this. Much cleaner, much better looking. So that's what you might want to use compound clips for. It helps when you want to have a nice clean transition. You've got a bunch of clips stacked up. Being able to add the transition just to the end of one clip is very useful and a big time saver. All right, now we're going to move on and we're going to look at how we can nest timelines and why you might want to do that. Resolve also allows us to nest timelines by just dragging one timeline into another. This can be very handy for organizing your work in logical pieces. For example, this is the project for the previous video I put up on the channel that outlined my top 10 new features in Resolve 18.5. To create that, I have a timeline bin, and inside of the timeline bin, I broke it up into a bunch of sections. The first section being the intro and the 1 through 6 quality of life updates, and then I followed that by 7 multi-merge node, 8 new codecs, and so on as you can see here. Then if we look over here, I have a main timeline, which is a timeline that's currently open. Inside of here, I have multiple timelines inside the main timeline. So I have 1 through 6, followed by 7, 8, and so on. I was able to then apply a single adjustment clip across all of the timelines to allow me to apply an adjustment to everything all at once instead of having to do it individually. In each of the timelines that you can see, I have in the tab timeline interface up here. This allowed me to break up my project into logical sections and then do each section. This can break down the work into bite-sized chunks. It makes it a little less daunting when you've got a lot of work in front of you. Another use for this is in narrative. You might want to have a timeline called Act 1, another called Act 2, and Act 3, etc. And then within each of those, you might want to have a timeline of each scene, Scene 1, Scene 2, Scene 3, etc. And then nest them together. One of the things you can do in Resolve is you can have multiple levels of nesting. So, I can actually nest all of these timelines into a different timeline or even into a single compound clip. So if I zoom out here, I can select all of the contents of the timeline and say new compound clip, I'll call it demo. And now we have nested timelines that are now nested inside of a timeline inside of a compound clip. Now I'll warn you that you can do this infinitely. There's no limit on it. However, the more that you nest and keep nesting inside of the same thing, the less stable resolve will become. I've crashed it many times at just having two levels of compound clips nested together. The same is true with nesting timelines. I've nested four timelines together and have Resolve crash pretty consistently, but that was a long time ago in an earlier version of Resolve, so they've probably stabilized it quite a bit since then. Your mileage may vary. So that's it for this video. I want to keep it as brief as possible, but to show you that you can use nesting to organize your work and to make your life a little bit easier while you're editing inside of Resolve. I hope this helps someone out there. If it did, please click like as that helps other folks on the internet find it. And until the next video, take care.